Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So a question I get quite a lot is, what's a Cat D2 worth? That's such a highly subjective question, there is no one set answer because there are so many factors that play into it and assessing value on crawler tractors is completely different than assessing value on wheel tractors. They're just, they're not even on the same planet when it comes to that. So we have this right here. Um, well, we'll get into it. I'll tell you what I paid for it. I actually bought it last spring. It sat on the place here all summer. I haven't had any time to do anything with it since, but we'll do a walk around of it. We'll assess it. I'll show you some of the things that stood out to me, good and bad, and then we'll play what is it worth. So let's get started. First thing we want to check is the serial number. So on the D2s, the engine tag is always right down here. We have a 5U. 4177. Now, they also have a tag on the back end and it should be the same number if this is an all original tractor. And yep, 5U4177. So, this is a numbers matching machine. It has not been repowered, so it doesn't have the engine out of something else on the back end out of something else. So, it would be a candidate for a stand up tractor restoration if you would go that far. This puts it very tail end of 1949 model year. It is actually 26 units from the end of production that year, so very, very late 49. So to begin assessing it, first thing we want to determine is are both engines free? And yep, diesel engine spins, starting engine, yes, that spins, and honestly, I can feel some compression. Yeah, so that's a good sign. One thing I don't like about it though, well, we'll pull vertically on the flywheel I don't really get much but see that in play about a quarter inch in and out that tells me that that front main bearing up there likely has lost its dowel so we don't run these starting engines when they have crank in play like that because we'll break the mag gear long story short that always happens so that's gonna need some work but it rolls and it's got compression good sign as far as the diesel engine goes I know the guy I bought this from he is a old tractor guy mainly into John Deere's, but he had this sitting there, and I trust his word, and he says it does run. I don't know how well it ran, but he had it in his shed for about 20 years. Prior owner had done a bunch of cylinder head work on it. You can see the cylinder head looks like it's been hot tanked. It's a, a different patina than the block, so that tells me it likely has a good head on it. And the prior owner was confident enough in the rest of the machine's condition that he would put some work into the cylinder head, so that doesn't necessarily bother me. So, taking his word that the diesel does run, we just kind of look at the rest of the machine. This is a fender tank model, D2, so fuel tanks up on the fender, and these always had a heavy, you can see here, 3.8 steel support plate beneath the stamped sheet metal fender, and standard seat box arrangement. The fender's on these uh, fender tank models were about six inches shorter than the seat tank models. It's hard to tell because they've relocated the seat further back here. The seat back in its original position is even with the backs of the fenders, but I think somebody pushed that back for a little bit more leg room. And we got some brackets welded back here. It looks like maybe for hanging chains, something, I don't know. They did quite a bit of that. We're kind of dented up. You now that's not a huge deal to have to redo. Toolbox is, you know, it's had some hinge work done, so that's not really pristine. This fender's okay. It's got a decent hood on it. It's got side panels on the engine yet. They're a little bit beat. This one's intact over here. Don't know why they have that wire there, but they do. Grill's been caved in a little bit, but from what I can see, the radiator core, the core looks pretty clean on this thing. So, fan blades also look like they're in good condition. So, yeah, there's uh, there's some prospects here. See if we can get a read on the hour meter. We have a 0793 just turned into 5. 7,900 hours. It's hard to know if those even work or how accurate they are anyhow. Next, we want to look up here at some of the controls. And, yeah, the, um, the custom high back seat is what sold me on this one, to tell you the truth. No, not at all. But funny part is we even have the old seat belt safety first right oh the armrests yeah they do this one pivots i think this one's not so well we don't buy it for that anyhow let's take a look at well main clutch all right good over center snap liking that 
steering clutch levers. Okay, you see how when you pull one, the other one jumps? That tells me that bevel gear shaft is loose down in there. It's popping side to side. So, we very likely have a very worn gear set in the back end of this thing because for that shaft to get that loose where it moves those levers that far, that's been running loose for a long time. So we're already highly suspect of the condition of the back end of this. Brake pedal wear, of course, we look at this a lot. These are pretty sharp, both sides. So a pretty safe bet that this has never had a dozer blade on it. And we look down here, and we still have corks in the old threaded holes in the track frames. No witness marks. Somebody's added that little piece of metal for something along the way. So very, very high likelihood this was an ag tractor, draw bar tractor only. And looking back here, this is not good. This is probably the most worn D2 draw bar I've ever seen. We've added a lot of metal down here, just about pulled it through again. The top ear's gone. And look how thin we are right here, how sharp that is. I don't know how many times this has to swing side to side to just about wear that through. That's so incredibly thin. And even look at the swing plate. Look how thin we are here versus out here. It should be about an inch thick like that. I mean, we're just about worn halfway through on that. I've never seen a D2 draw bar so badly worn. So guaranteed, this spent its whole life pulling implements. So at this point, well, there's a few good things we've looked at so far, mostly bad. I would have to just assume the whole back end is just completely worn out on this thing. Maybe we have a front half that's good, a good diesel engine, possibly some good starting engine parts. We don't know a few associated odds and ends of sheet metal. For the most part though, this is not looking like a candidate for restoration, but we'll go on to the undercarriage and pardon my shadow, but some good things we have going for us here. Track tin is in place. We have top carrier rollers in place and they're not all worn out. Both sides have a top carrier roller on them, so that's good. Another big selling point. These are the heavy duty Caterpillar factory option rock guards with the heavy gussets, heavy frames. We have the stay bolts that go all the way through and bridge to the other side. That's a very desirable item down there, one you hardly ever see. So right there, those are big, big items. Another big thing it's got going for it, these are the factory option large front idlers. They're not the standard egg idler that comes around and keeps the track chain off the ground until the bottom rollers contact it. These idlers are large enough that they put the tracks on the ground immediately and give you a much longer footprint. It's a much more stable machine, doesn't pitch and rock, doesn't buck quite so bad. That's, that's a nice thing to have. We look at the sprockets. Now one thing you want to take note of, look at how much grease is weeping around that sprocket nut. That tells me odds are this was not pressed to the spec back onto the shaft at one point in time and someone just probably just tightened it on with a nut. Problem is when you don't press these on to spec, most times they will loosen back up and we probably have some excessive spline wear sprocket hub to sprocket shaft. If that's the case, the hub is trashed, the shaft is probably trashed, but we've got some weld on sprocket rims that look very, very good. So if all the rest of that's bad, we still have new looking sprocket rims. Let's get out of this glare, go look at the other side. We'll take our undercarriage measurement gauge here and we're missing the front track tin here. Not a huge deal. We still have the rock guards in place, carry roller in place, front idler. So we have idler reconditioned at 5.30 seconds gap. And I'll tell you what, that idler's looking really, really good. We don't have a gauge setting for this top roller, but just looking at it, there's no wear marks, flanges are good, top rollers look excellent. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get on this. We have the same weld on sprocket rim here. Get a profile here, okay, sprocket. Recondition at a 3 16 gap where those three arrows are. We're gonna have to turn this around. It's the only way we're gonna make it fit We're still very close to the original profile of those sprocket teeth. So those sprocket rims are just about brand new Look at how loose we've been wearing here. I'll guarantee the sprocket splines are just about stripped out on the shaft right now So we know this hub's bad again. We know that shaft is bad even worse than the other side Let's take a look at rails so we see the recondition mark there. We're probably 50% worn on rails. 
which means we'll never wear these rails out in our lifetime. So that's a very, very good thing. The only thing I don't understand, well, at one point, somebody torched this rail in half to split the track, but then it's like they also hogged the master pin out and replaced it with something not to spec. I don't understand why people do some of the things they do on some of these, but that's a deal there we'd have to fix. Still, 50% set of rails, good sprocket rims, good carry rollers, good front idlers, large front idlers. Let's take a look at the bottom roller, and I don't know if I'm going to get the gauge down here. Let's see if I can reach from the inside. Just looking at it, it looks pretty good. Okay, roller reconditioned at a quarter inch gap, and we're at the widest, not quite an eighth. So again, rollers, conservative estimate, 50% left. We're probably a little bit better than that. So I'm liking what I'm seeing on this undercarriage right here. Track pads, Grouser, I'd say we're 50%. Again, for the hours we put on these old machines, we're never wearing that the rest of the way out in our lifetime. So this thing just started looking a lot, lot better in my book. So the gears in my head are turning. This is probably not the best candidate for restoration unless you had another parts D2 on hand that may have a good back end that you could substitute all those really worn parts. Uh, hmm, still interested in it though. Let's just take a look at some minor details. So yeah, fender mount tank still has the factory uh, original fuel cap on, buy clean fuel, keep it clean. That's good. Let's have a look inside. Good gasket, nice and clean. Still has the pre-strainer in there and the cap off of somebody's fuel can down on the bottom. Dipsticks in place. These are a 20 gallon tank. Looks like we're about nine gallons plus. Half a tank of fuel in there. Doesn't seem too bad. And we look, yeah, this was never an electric start pony motor because we have either had a hole hacked right here, or not hacked, but cut a clean one from the factory, or a bump out. Being that that's the flat dash, this was rope start from the beginning. So we got these two pegs sticking out of the dash. Coupled with that witness mark, it looks like somebody had like a homebrew electric start set up on the starting engine where they like to put a bracket on the fender run a belt to that rope groove in the pony flywheel and then have their starter on a pivot so that they could just manually tighten the belt spin the starting engine over those were likely guides for their belt at one point i'm pretty sure that explains all that yeah um american Bosch mag switch still intact still got the knobs on the throttle and choke rods and fan shrouds in place that's you well know, 50 dollars on a bad day 100 bucks on a good day Decent looking hood, $50. Decent fender tank, another $50. Pre-cleaner top, up on the air cleaner, always a nice piece to have. We got here, Waterloo Foundry Company, a rain cap, Waterloo, Iowa, USA. That is a hefty rain cap. Aftermarket, of course, but kind of neat. Yeah, never had a generator drive. We just have the flat block off plate next to the cam gear. So yeah, this was a pretty basic one from a start. No electrics to begin with but oil cooler lines are still in place. Oil cooler is still hooked up, so that's good. The drain tube's still on the starting engine, probably because the side panels are still on. When people would rip these side panels off, well then the first time the tracks would snag something come around, it would snap these drain tubes right off, so that's a nice piece to have. Starting engine parts, if we have a good grindable crank in that thing, that's $150, $200 right there. If we got a decent block, decent pistons, whatever, that's more money still. Got oil in it, that's a good sign. Diesel. Got oil in it, it's black, but it is a diesel. He said it ran. Yeah, this was their homebrew battery box. I'm sure that's what that was all from right there. Yeah, just kind of looking at it. Decent dash, a few dollars there. We're pretty much writing off this seat box. Pretty much writing off this toolbox. Just out of curiosity. Well, they left the key in it. There's that. And an old glove. An old rag. Broken funnel. Spark plug wrench. Just some other... What's this? Ooh, that's a drain off the bottom of the fuel housing. That's uh, right and proper. I don't know if that's ever been installed. It's got a wire on it like a tag used to be there. And yellow paint on the 
flange surface. That might be new old stock. Interesting. Got another neat spark plug wrench with a brush on it. And your mechanics wire. So they must have liked starting fluid back in the day. Several of those caps in there. Anyway, that toolbox pretty much written off. This fender's pretty much written off. It's it's okay, but we might as well figure that the whole back end is pretty much trashed. Unless we get in and find a couple good bull gears, but odds are, if they didn't press the sprockets back on, they also did not press the bull gears, so the bull gears might have worn hubs too. Bull gear's been wobbling around. That means the bull pinions are probably shot. Let's have a quick look underneath. Okay, this is interesting here. We have... This quarter turn valve, like a drain with these pipe fittings coming out of the steering clutch compartment um, plug hole down there. And that tells me that this steering clutch on this side, this compartment would fill up with grease from the back end so often that they decided to plumb a quarter turn valve on there to drain that out from time to time. More evidence that that bevel shaft has likely just been popping back and forth in there forever and it's completely destroyed the seal on that side, which the other side's probably not good either. And well, we got good looking final drive housings anyway, so I guess we found something good about the back end, right? So to tally it all up at this point, what are we really buying here? I'm buying parts. I'm not buying this for a fixer upper because I, you're only buying about half a tractor at this point. That part's bad, that part's maybe good, a question mark. This part's pretty decent. So tallying up the list in my mind, if it weren't for the undercarriage on this, I wouldn't be interested at all. Because of the undercarriage, all the aspects that I listed, if I farmed that out piece by piece and sold it all, 50% condition everything, maybe better with the guards, with the tin, the larger idlers, the 50% rails, pads, sprocket rims, eight good bottom rollers, 2,500 bucks right there if I sold that piece by piece. We have a few other interesting pieces like the fender tank, the hood, the radiator, the guard, starting engine parts, whatever. Even if nothing in that back end is good, I'm betting, well, take a look down here too. We've got a good mainspring under there with the pony spring still in place. All that tallied up, I got three grand worth of parts sitting right here. If I wanted to break it down, sell it piece by piece. To buy into it, I'd like to be at a thousand bucks. I'm telling you, that's where I'd be real happy with this because you can't go wrong with this undercarriage on a thousand bucks. I still would have been happy at 1500. Offered 1500, seller didn't want to take it, said he had to get at least 2000. I took him up on the $2,000 deal because we're still in green light status. We're still not upside down in it, being that I've got everything I need to take this thing all apart, break it down, scrap what's bad, keep what's good, transfer good parts onto other machines. This is a parts unit at this point that we're hoping also has a good diesel engine. That's where we are. Um, the undercarriage is what sold it for me. Combined with the fact that this was sitting 30 minutes from my house. If I would have been into hauling an entire day to get there and back to bring it here, 1500 would have been my max. But being that I could go back home, hook on the trailer, get back there, winch it on, and still get back home before lunch same day, we're doing $2,000 on this all day long. So that's my walk around and assessment of this particular D2 and what it's worth as it sits in my part of the world. Of course, these prices vary depending on where you are in this country or on this planet because it's a supply and demand type situation. Um, now, if this tractor in its non-running, questionable running state right now had a good back end on it, $3,000 is not out of the question. If it had a good back end, was a good runner, could be verified, it had a little bit better paint on it, thirty five hundred four grand. If it was completely restored, six thousand, maybe seven thousand on a good day, depending on who you run across. So, I'd say East Coast U.S. price is pretty similar to like what they sell for around here in the Midwest. You go out on the West Coast, you can cut all of these tallies that I've gave, given you down to like a third of what I've stated because there's so many of them out there, and it's not hard to find ones that are way better than this, just about around every corner. So. That's the place to be if you want to find some really good quality cats and for decent money because supply and demand. There's so many of them out there. So, yeah, that's pretty much the whole rundown on this. Long-winded again, but I wanted to kind of walk you guys through my thought process 
show you guys some of the things that I look at, some of the things that I notice and see, and just take it from there. So that red tractor's sitting there, and I've got a chain on it already. Maybe we should pull this around the yard and see if it makes smoke, huh? <laughs> 